Stan Gibalisco here. I'd like to discuss a concept that is dealt with in my book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics. It has to do with resonant circuits made up of resistors, inductors, and capacitors. Resonance is an important property in all kinds of electronic devices, analog devices in particular, and radio frequency analog devices even more particularly than that. Amplifiers, oscillators, and things like that. I have the fifth edition, that's edition number five, of Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics before me right now, but this topic is covered in all editions. You'll find it in chapter 16 in the fifth edition, beginning on page 264, where we talk about series, resistive, uh, inductive, capacitive, or RLC circuits, series circuits. Here's a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor, all connected in series. That is to say, end-to-end, -end, like the links in a chain. Okay, and we also can deal with a parallel circuit, resistive, inductive, capacitance. And that one is shown down here at the lower right. Well, what does resonance mean exactly? Resonance <coughs> is a property where a device can store and release energy rhythmically in a very specific way. It is sometimes a good thing and sometimes not so good. In musical instruments, for example, resonance occurs when the sound waves have a length that matches, uh, is an integral multiple or, or integral divisor of the length of the instrument itself. So, uh, for example, a trombone is an excellent example of a continuously adjustable resonant acoustical device, which you can change the pitch of what you get with a trombone by moving the slide in and out. And also, you can get several different resonant frequencies. They all tend to be integral multiples of each other, at, that is to say, at octaves. Well, resonance in an electronic RLC circuit operates in a somewhat similar manner, but then again, it's an electrical phenomenon, not an acoustical phenomenon. When we have a series resistive inductive capacitive circuit like this, there is a specific frequency at which the capacitive reactants, the reactants of the capacitor, and the reactants of the inductor, the inductive reactants, exactly balance each other out. Now remember, capacitive reactance is negative imaginary, and inductive reactance is positive imaginary. As the frequency increases, in general, all other things being equal, capacitive reactance approaches zero. It becomes less and less negative, whereas inductive reactance, as the frequency increases, it becomes greater and greater positively. But as the frequency decreases, the exact opposite happens. The capacitive reactance increases negatively, and the inductive reactance decreases positively. So at a certain frequency, for every inductive capacitive combination, there is a specific frequency at which the inductive reactants and the capacitive reactants add up to zero because they are exact negatives of each other. They're imaginary negatives, but when you add two additive inverses in imaginary numbers, you get zero just as you get uh, with real numbers. Now the resistance here can be anything from zero, that would be a straight short circuit piece of wire, to infinity, that would be an open circuit. Of course, in an open circuit, you're not going to get any current, and everything kind of becomes irrelevant. 
But what happens is that when you have the inductance and the capacitance with exactly canceling reactances in a series combination, if you short out this resistor, let's just suppose that we short out that resistor with a piece of wire, so it becomes zero. Then you get theoretically zero impedance, a very, very low in practice because there is some internal resistance to the coil and the capacitor too is not a perfect device. In the real world everything's a little bit imperfect, but you get a very, very low purely resistive impedance. And then of course as you increase this resistance, you add this resistance in series and you get an increasing purely resistive impedance equal to the value of that resistor. Well now let's look at the parallel case. At the same frequency, suppose that the inductance and the capacitance here are the same here as they are here. Then we're going to get resonance again at the same frequency. However, instead of a very very low, now let's suppose that we just take that resistor out of there. First of all I've got to ungroup it, then we can take the resistor out. Suppose we do that. Now this G stands for conductance. Now we have no conductance infinite resistance. I think that's just going to confuse you here, so I'll take that out. Inductance, capacitance, no resistor in the circuit at all. At resonance, which will be the same frequency as we had in the series case, instead of a very, very low, near zero resistive impedance, it's going to be extremely high instead. Extremely high then if we add the resistor back in we're going to end up with a purely resistive impedance more or less equal to the value of that resistor in fact in an ideal circuit it would be exactly equal to the value of that resistor as we reduce the resistance down to zero for example if we were to literally short this out we'd get a situation analogous to what happens if we remove the resistor in the series circuit. If we were to remove this resistor, let's just go ahead and do that. Take this resistor out. No current can flow, nothing can happen. If we short this out, well, current will flow we won't get any resonant effect because these components are shorted out. So, when we do this with series and parallel circuits, we can get resonance in either case, but we get different phenomena. We get an extremely high impedance here and an extremely low impedance here, assuming that these resistance values are very, very low here and very very high over here. Now normally in a radio receiver or transmitter oscillator or amplifier we do not want this resistance to be involved at all. So what we want to do is we want to have a short circuit here so we just have an inductor and a capacitor in series and we want to have an open circuit here so that we just have an effect an inductance and a capacitance in parallel. Parallel resonance series resonance. That occurs at a single frequency and also at all harmonics of that frequency. Remember what a harmonic is. A harmonic is a multiple and integral multiple or a whole number multiple of the fundamental frequency. Every circuit like this has a oops, fundamental frequency and it will resonate there and at the harmonics. You can calculate 
the actual resonant frequency of a series or parallel RLC circuit with a specific formula that is given in this book. Uh, so you, if you know the uh, capacitance in farads and the inductance in Henry's, you can calculate the resonant frequency in hertz with a very specific formula. I will not get into that here because uh, there really isn't. I don't want to extend this video beyond your attention span. But that's how RLC circuits work. RLC in parallel, RLC in series, they always have resonant properties as long as the resistance is non-zero. Uh, well, as long as the resistance here is finite or zero, and as long as the resistance here is finite but not zero. Of course, if it's infinite, it'll work too. Infinite, again, is what happens when you take that out. Stan Jabalisco signing off from the Black Hills of South Dakota, United States of America. Visit me on the internet at sciencewriter.net. Go to the Amazon link for all of my books. You can get Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics. You can get Electronics Demystified, Electricity Demystified, whole bunch of good stuff. So long, until next time.